Hi, my name is Rebecca and welcome to Yarn and Pajamas. Today is a crochet podcast number 67. So I missed last week guys. So it's been like two weeks since we've hung out, but yeah, I was, I've just, work has been kicking my butt here lately. And I've just been so wiped out by the time I get home that I just kind of want to veg out. So, yeah, that's where we've been at. Um, but I do have a finished object to share with you guys. And I will just show him to you. It is this uh, snowflake gnome that I was working on the last time that I hung out with you guys. This is a free pattern on Passionate Crafters website. And I'll put a link down below. But she's having like a gnome um, cow through 2023. And I probably won't do every one. Like I'm, I know I'm not going to do the February one. Because I have like three Valentine gnomes. So I'm not really looking to make another one. Um, but I thought this little dude was cute. And I do have another snowflake gnome that he will go with. So yeah. But this is him. I did do some changes. I didn't do her body arms or nose. These are all from Pampino, but I liked it. He turned out pretty cool. I did have a little bit of problem like understanding what I was supposed to do with the snowflake. And she does make, did make a video, but it was after I'd got mine done where she shows you what to do. But once I figured it out, I was like, oh, well, that's not as bad as what I was making it in my head. So I used Chepier's Katona Cotton. The nose and the hands are color 255 shell. The bottom and the hat is called Powder Blue. It's number 384. Um, his body here and the snowflake right here is called um, Bluebird. The white snowflake is called Snow White. And then this silver one is called Light Silver. Um, I'm not sure how many snowflakes were on hers, but i done three different color ones and put on his hat. And now his beard is not crocheted. Hers is a crochet beard. And I just really don't like those. They don't appeal to me. I like my gnomes to have a furry kind of beard, a fuzzy beard. So this is um, felting wool that I got from Amazon. And it's, you know, just the gray color. That's why I put the gray snowflake up there or silver snowflake. Just to kind of match his beard and tie him all in. And I used a 2.20 millimeter hook on him. And he is all finished. And I will set him somewhere somewhere okay so the next thing I worked on is not finished and I didn't really get a whole lot of it done but it is a corner to corner blanket that I'm working on it's living here and this is a tea doddles uh, tote bag but it is this multi-colored one and the last time let's see that I saw you guys, I was here and I've put a couple rows in since then. So here is what it is looking like. It's growing, it's getting bigger. And I am using um, a sugar wheel cotton, like cake type thing. It's from Yarn Bee, that from Hobby Lobby. Um, here is it. I had to um, take it apart. So this is why it took me quite a long time to do this too. Um, I don't know if anybody else has this issue when working with um, this yarn. It's great. I love it. It's soft. It's nice. But it um, knots up on itself quite a bit. So when I got to the end of my cake, I was on... I think like this blue part right here or something. Let's see right here. This blue part. Well, I have two other cakes of it and neither one of them starts at that color. So I had to kind of take it apart and 
put it back together in the starting with the color that I need. So I just put a one of these little things around it. I can't remember where I got this from. I remember it's I've had it for a long time. Um I seen it on No Catchy Name on Ella's um channel. Someone had sent her one to kind of like review or something and I went and and purchased one because I thought, oh that's so neat and I like foxes. And she had a fox one. So, um, if I can remember, I think it's like Mulberry or something. Berry Lane or something. I'll go back through my Etsy and I will look because I did order it off of Etsy. And if she still has her store, I will put it down below. But, um, it kind of just kept my cake from falling back apart after I wound it back up. So that did take me quite a bit of time to get this done because the stuff kept knotting on itself and it was just like, it was so time consuming. But I finally got it wound up and then I started working on it and done a little bit of headway and I am using a H or five millimeter hook for this. Like I said, it's just living here in this tote bag. I'm in no rush on this. I just work on it um, when, you know, I have the desire to, I guess. Um, you know, I just learned to corner to corner. And when I bought this yarn and had this yarn, that was what I thought of when I seen it was like, oh, it would make such a pretty corner to corner blanket with you know the waves of the color and I just never learned how like it took me two years to that it's been on my goals to do this so yeah so it's just a leisurely project of you know like when it gets done it gets done kind of deal um the next thing I'm working on speaking of corner to corner now it has two bags that it lives in. So we've got the Home Depot bag here. And then we have the chicken drawstring bag. So I use my Home Depot bag to bring down um, my colors of yarn. Those need to be put back up. And then the actual project lives in this drawstring chicken bag that I bought from No Catchy Name. Um, yeah, I love her drawstring bags. So it is another corner to corner blanket and it is part of um, a cow that I'm doing. It is Coco's, uh, Coco's Crochet Cow 2023, I think is what it's called. So, I'll put links to Lisa's channel down below, but, um, she's doing, it's only for six months. So this only lasts six months. So we get two, um, prompts each month and they go by, um, months. So the first month here in January, we've done January and February. So what she does is she picks three colors and then a wild card color. And, um, I'm doing, um, corner to corner, but she's doing a stitch sampler. So, um, some people are doing, you know, kind of like their own thing, but using her colors. And then some people are doing like the stitch sampler along with her. So, and because I wanted to learn how to do corner to corner and I thought this would be such a great way to learn how to do it. And I kind of like a fun way is I joined her cow. And once I started doing it, I really, really loved it. So the colors for February were green, gray, and brown. And then orange was the wild card color. So I've gotten eight rows put in and this is it. So now this sparkly green right here is a scrap of some kind. I'm gonna say it's like a big twist maybe um, because the sparkle is green as well. And then, let's see. Some of them have the ball band on them. So, the gray here is a Hobby Lobby's. I love this cotton. And it is called Gray Beard. 
And then that brown is, it was just a little ball, but I'm pretty sure it feels like Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton too. So I'm going to say it's that um, dark brown that they have. And then this orange is um, a Red Heart Super Saver, and I believe it's called Pumpkin. I have, it doesn't have the ball band on it, but here it is. I need to put those back up because these are scrappies. So now my um, project here, all of my colors, here's the green. You guys want to see. I'm pretty sure that this is a, uh, a, a big twist. So um, all of these will come from my stash. So it's kind of like a stash buster type um, project. So it will all come from my stash. All of the colors will be pulled from, here is like scrap balls, like little tinier balls. And then back here, I have two totes that sit behind me. This sits on top of them that are full of either full skeins or skeins that have been partially used. And then down here is another big tote. Over there is two more big totes. I got to work through some of this yarn, guys. I got to work through some of it. So I'm going to try to do some bigger top projects this year and work through some of this yarn that I have. Yes. So put this back here. Let's put him back in the thing. Oh, and before I forget, I'm using... I think it's a J, a six millimeter hook. I'm having a lot of fun with um, this cow. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Okay. Okay, now the last thing that I've been working on is a, it's gonna be a fair entry. And it's living here. Oh. In this big old bag. This is a 31 bag. I can't remember what they're called, but I have two of them. I have this one with llamas on it, and then I have one that's a Christmas themed one. They're really good for bigger projects, and these, um, I'm going to get me a couple more of these bags too. I like using these for like grocery sacks and stuff too. They're real good and sturdy, and they're made really good. I'm not affiliated with 31 or anything, but if you've ever owned a 31 bag, you know that 31's got some good quality products. Okay. So, what I'm working on, and I'm going to pop in a picture here, it is called the Sunny Blanket. So, I was on Etsy, not Etsy, Pinterest, a couple months ago. I'm going to say it was like right before Christmas. When I like fully committed, like this is what I'm going to do. So I was just like perusing around like one does. And I seen this blanket. And I was just like mesmerized by the colors. I loved the brightness of the yellow. And I'm just like this blanket looks so summery. It looks so um, happy. And I was like, I just want it. I want to have it. I want to cuddle up in it. And then I thought, well, if I'm going to make myself this blanket, then I need to do it as a fair entry because it looks very intricate and complicated. And I have said that if I don't win a purple ribbon this year on the blankets, then I'm not going to worry about entering blankets anymore. Um, because I'm, let's say, this will be my third year. No. Yeah. Third year. And, um, I just feel like the blankets that win the purple ribbon, ribbon are very basic. Like, it's like, really? That? But that's just me. Um, but I figure I give it one last ditch effort. And, you know, if I don't win the purple ribbon in the blanket area, then I won't really kill myself trying to get a blanket done for the fair. But, like, concentrate on something else to try to win that purple ribbon. So, I thought this will be the perfect blanket because I really, really want it. And it looks very intricate. So, I started... Going through my yarn, all my bins up here. 
Um, that's why it's such a, a mess back here is because I've been like just going through them and not really putting anything back. But so I pulled out a bunch of yarn that kind of reminded me of the colors in the blanket because I'm not using the kind of yarn that they have there. But I got like the closest that I could get from yarn from my stash. I did have to buy some colors because I did not have like the color that I envisioned. So this sunny blanket, I'm making it with worsted white yarn, number four, acrylic, basic yarn you could get at the Hobby Lobby or the Walmart or, you know, Joann's or whatever. And, oh, wow. <laughs> it's like, I don't know where to start at first to tell you guys about this blanket. So I, it is made in parts. Let's go there. So you have four parts that it's made from. So it's made, the center part, the round, is called the Sunny Mandala. And this is a paid for patterns. Patterns. There are multiple patterns that you have to buy if you want to make the blanket. If you just want to make the mandala, you just have to have that one. So it's the Sunny Mandala. And then you use the Sunny Border. And then you use um, the, the, they call them the small squares, which uses part of the mandala. And then on another side, like rounds 13 through 17 are free on her blog, but you have to have rounds one through 12, which is the part is the sunny mandala. And then you have the dandelion border. So, they have different colorways. You can choose what you want to do. I'll put links to her blog. I'll put links to her Etsy store. Everything down below if it's something that you guys are interested in. I did notice that I purchased the Sunny pattern, the Sunny Mandala pattern. And I had put the other two patterns just in my cart. I hadn't planned on purchasing them yet. Not until I got closer to actually doing them. But she sent me a coupon. I don't know if that's automated or what. But, you know, like when you leave stuff in your cart. um, I got like a 15 or 20% off coupon. 10%, something like that. So, I just went ahead and bought the other two patterns since the coupon arrived. But, so, since I knew that I needed the mandala. And then I needed those 12 or the 20 squares going around. And they all were worked rounds 1 through 12 of the mandala, sunny mandala. I decided I would just make 21 of the rounds 1 through 12 and have that part of it done. So that's what I've been working on. <laughs> all that for this little bag. So, I'm on round two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, I'm on round number eight of this sunny blanket here. And I'm not completely, I think I have eight more squares to do round number eight with to um, get all of round number eight. So, and I'm using a... I feel like I'm not explaining this blanket very good. I'm sorry. A 4.5 millimeter hook to make this. And what I do is I just start and each round I just do. So I done like these middle two I done together and I done 21 of them. And then this round I just went and done it to all of them. That way I know because... The pattern is amazing too, guys. It's like, um, there's no video, but the written pattern is amazing. The pictures are amazing. Like, I've never had to question what's going on because the pictures are so good. And it's like, you have to start in specific places. And she shows you in the pictures. She writes it out. So, in order to not get confused, I just won't thought. It would be easier to do all of row eight and row seven and row six all at one time so that I would kind of, and it has happened, I remember the pattern. I remember where I'm supposed to start and all of that stuff. So, I'm hopefully going to get 
these next eight. And after every four, I stop and I sew my ends in, guys. So I have no ends. Now this round right here, let me set this off to the side, was pretty interesting because it is, um, it looks like a little like cluster, but it's like four treble crochets together. So it was pretty interesting. Y'all hear that train? I did have to go online because I didn't know how to do that stitch. Um, a, a four treble crochet together, but Mikey from the Crochet Crowd had a video. When I watched it, I was like, oh, and there we go. So I have these four left, and then I will have 21 little rounds of up to eight rounds here. Now, this is why I didn't make my video yesterday, because I wanted to get this finished for you guys, because I wanted to show you guys a finished square. This is the small square. And then we'll have to put you on hold for just a second because I need to blow my nose, of course. Okay, thank you guys for allowing me to go to blow my nose. But I wanted to show you guys a finished small square. So I went, took one of the rounds. So now there's only 20 rounds down in here. Took one of the rounds and went on and done rows 9, 10, 11, and 12 of the Sunny Mandala, and then I went on to her blog and finished rows um, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, which start to build the square, the little small square. And here it is, guys. Look how cute it is. I did block this. God, I hope I didn't mess it up by blocking it too big or something, but um, yeah, here it is. Here's the back. And you'll notice like the yellow is only in there once up to rounds 12. So another stitch I had never done was this stitch right here. Let's see if I can get it in the camera, which was a single crochet spike stitch. I had never done that. I had to go online and see what that was all about. But I feel like I blocked it too much because you can kind of see like the little holes and stuff, but I don't know. It was like, I blocked it to 10 inches. And in the pattern, she says nine inches, but they're using a DK weight yarn and I'm using a four weight yarn. So I thought that 10 would be acceptable, but we'll see. But here it is. I had a lot of fun doing this, how it builds up these little petals. It's just so cool. It's called overlay crochet and I had never done overlay crochet before. But here is the small square. So I will end up with 20 of these small squares when all is said and done. They're not actually small, but that's what they call them, small squares. So the colors that I'm using for this big endeavor is this orange. Now I did have to purchase this because I did not have the right color of orange. I had like the carrot from Red Heart and the pumpkin from Red Heart, but neither one of those was like the orange that I wanted. And I went to Hobby Lobby and I found this one. It's called Desert Glaze. And I thought this was the perfect orange to go with all of the other colors. Um, the blue color I'm using is also from Hobby Lobby, and it is called Medium Blue, and I did have this in my stash, and actually, I found four whole skeins of this when I was looking, but two of the skeins were like this color, and two of the skeins were a noticeably darker color, so if I have to, I will use it, but I'm going to use these two first. And this color I did have in my stash and I will probably have to buy some more, but it is Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton and it's in amethyst. I think it's the color. Let's see. I think I covered the color over. Yes, it's called amethyst. So I try to be in the things and tape them down as it kind of smushes down 
it will eventually get to the point where I will have to cake this floppiness up. This color I had in my stash, it's Hobby Lobby's Lime. And the, I love this cotton. I only have this one skein though, so I may have to end up getting more of that. Um, I did have to purchase this one. There is a round that the color is like a reddish color, but it's like a reddish pink color. And I could not find a color like equivalent to that at Hobby Lobby or Joann's. So I went with this color. It's just straight on pink. It's called, I think, Desert Hot Rose. And I thought this will go with the rest of the colors. And then the last color I had in my stash, I actually had two of them. And it's these Crafter Secrets um, in just yellow. And I got them at Hobby Lobby on clearance for $2.49. You know, these things are like 10 bucks normally. They're big, massive ones. So I thought since I had so much of this yellow already, and it reminded me of the yellow in the blanket, that it would be perfect. And I think that all of the colors do go together pretty good. I think the lime could have been a little bit brighter, like I could have picked a little bit brighter of a green, but I think it goes. Anyways, what do you guys think? Is the green too dull of a green for the rest of the colors or is it just perfect? But I think the pink works spot on instead of having a red, so I like it a lot. So those are the colors I'm using. And let's see, did I bring my hook? Did I tell you guys what kind of hook I'm using? I think it's a 4.5 millimeter. Yes, four point five millimeter hook. And like I said, my square came out to 10 inches when I blocked it. Um, yeah, so, and yeah, I'm super, super excited about this. It's like I can't stop working on it. I wanted to start something new to have something new to show you guys, but it's like I'm always like, oh, I wonder what the next round is going to be like or something like that because like each round let me just grab my things here so like i done like this purple round was like a, a different kind of stitch like i done this um i'm calling them tulips I, I they look like tulips to me but then the next round, round number eight, is just a straight up, just going across kind of stitch. So it's like, I want to get to round nine because I know it's going to be like a, a different, like I'm going to go down. I think round nine, I go down and start making the petals of the grain. From, I know that from doing that. But it's like, I want to be able to get to round 12 so that I can move on with just doing like one and do the, I want to do the mandala. I want to do the sun rays. Oh, I'm just super excited about this blanket. I don't know if you guys can tell, but yeah, but I also want, you know, to mix some other things in for you guys so that it's not like so stagnant. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, I think that that is all that I have for you guys. Um, let's see, acquisitions, I have not, oh, I do have one, we'll talk about this, this is my last tea Doddles mini, mini maker club, this is the last one, so this will be January's, uh, not January's, but December's, I soaked it with water too, I hope it didn't get down on the inside. Okay, so let's see what Christy had to say. Here, it says Mini Mini Maker Club. December is called Sweet Treats. 
This time of year, I'm always tempted by sweet treats. I also love to bake and try new recipes. So this fabric is a perfect fit. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys the yarn first. Oh, here it is. It looks, it reminds me of like chocolate or something. So the yarn is by Southern Skeins. It's a sock yarn. Um, I don't think it doesn't have a color. So it kind of reminds me of like, like autumnal colors. It's very cute. I like it a lot. And then let's get it right in to the bag. Look how cute this is. Look at that. It's got all kinds of sweet treats on it. So the fabric is called Sweets Toss from Snow Sweet Line by J. Waker Frisch for Riley Blake Designs. And the top band here is called Black with White Pin Dots. And because her bags are interchangeable, Let's see what the inside fabric is. Oh, look at that. It's very cute. And the interior fabric is Vintage Ads from Snow Sweet Line by J. Waker Frisch for Riley Blake Designs. So cute. So, um, Christy or T. Doddles is no longer doing the mini, mini maker clubs. So, I don't think we can sign up for them again this year, but I do know that the last time I checked on her website, she did have some like previous clubs that were available for purchase. If anybody wants to go on over. So the tea for, oops, sorry. The tea for December was, if I can get this open, I think it's Twinings. Oh, Winter Spice Herbal Tea. Ooh. And then my stitch markers for the month. I'm just dropping everything. Oh, this cute one with a little muffin tin like a little stand mixer like a kitchenite and it's on a lever back and then we've got a measuring cup <laughs> measuring cup and a whisk and it's on a claw so my goal is way up there I don't know if you guys can see it is all of my stitch markers from T Doddle um, my goal is to one day sit down and take the lobster clasps and switch them out for the lever backs. I just like them. They're so much easier for me to use. Oh, and there's something else. There is a mini silicone bunt liner for microwaving a single cupcake when you need a quick treat. Oh, and she also includes a recipe for a little cake so cute okay so yeah I have really enjoyed being a part of Christie's Club for the past two and one fourth years I kind of joined in at I think around like September of one year and then I done two complete years of it and I've had a blast this whole time she does such an amazing job on her bags and they're always such fun. Okay, so acquisition-wise, that has been about it. Um, I did notice that Amazon had some um, books on um, sale on their Kindle for $2.99, some crochet books. They had the 3D Granny Square book for $2.99. Um, they also had, um, there was another one. Oh, the Iconic Women book was on sale for $2.99 for the Kindle. Um, 
yeah so i will make sure like next week i will look through and see what all books they have because i think that would be like a good way to kind of try it out like i don't mind having ebooks um i think they're quite handy myself like just being on your phone or your tablet so it doesn't really bother me not having the physical book but if some people like physical books, but they kind of want to see what it's all about, I mean, three bucks isn't, you know, that big of a deal to say like, oh, well, you know, I'm glad I didn't waste $25 and only wasted $3, you know. And you can also look at your local library and see if they have the books that you want to try. And you can try them before you buy them kind of deal. Okay, so let's see. What else do I have to talk to you guys about? Um, I probably do have some show and tell, but I have been slacking on answering my emails. That was another thing. I just, you know, I come home and I veg out. I don't really do anything. So those have kind of been just sitting there in limbo. And like I said, I've been so busy at work. I've not been able to even like just open and, you know, read and try to respond there okay so i am gonna let you guys go get this edited and get this posted for you guys and hopefully i will have some stuff to show you next week i'm really jazzed about this blanket though guys so um i don't know quite what to say it's like i really really am itching to get back into it and start working back on it so, I don't know what all I'll do this week. I'm going to try to try to mix it up for you guys, though. I'm going to try to mix it up. Okay. I'm going to let you guys go now because I've just been sitting here just rambling on. Just rambling on. Yeah. Okay. I will talk to you guys in my next video. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sticking here with me and hanging out with me and supporting me and my channel with, you know, all of those thumbs up, those thumbs ups I hear helps like put me out there so that other people can find me. So, you know, if you don't mind, just leave me a thumbs up. You know, I'm, I don't want to pressure you or nothing like that. And I always love reading comments. I have been trying really good to stay up on all of my comments because I do love to answer each and every one of them because that makes me happy okay so this for real i'll let you guys go and i'll see you guys in the next video bye mm -hmm.